John Gill's Exposition of the Bible Text And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord shewed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. Exodus 15 25 Commentary And he cried unto the Lord, or prayed, as all the Targums, that God would appear for them, and relieve them in their distress, or, humanly speaking, they must all perish. Happy it is to have a God to go to in time of trouble, whose hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that he cannot hear. Moses knew the power of God, and trusted in his faithfulness to make good the promises to him, and the people, that he would bring them to the land he had swore to give them. And the Lord shewed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet, what this tree was is not known, if it was in its own nature sweet, as the author of Ecclesiasticus seems to intimate, when he says, in chapter 38, 5 was not the water made sweet with the wood, that its virtue might be known. Yet a single tree could never of itself sweeten a flow of water, and such a quantity as was sufficient for so large a number of men and cattle, and therefore, be it what it will, it must be owing to a miraculous operation that the waters were made sweet by it. But the Hebrew writers say the tree was bitter itself, and therefore the miracle was the greater. Gorionite says it was wormwood, and both the Targums of Jonathan and Jerusalem call it the bitter tree, Ardaphne, which Cohen de Lara makes to be the same which botanists call Rhododaphne or Rose Laurel, and which, he says, bears flowers like lilies, which are exceeding bitter, and are poison to cattle, and so says Baal Arak, and much the same has Elias Levita. And this agrees well enough with the mystical and spiritual application that may be made of this, whether these bitter waters are considered as an emblem of the bitter curses of the law, for that bitter thing sin, which makes work for bitter repentance, and for which the law writes bitter things against the sinner, which, if not prevented, would issue in the bitterness of death, so that a sensible sinner can have nothing to do with it, nor can it yield him any peace or comfort. But Christ, the tree of life, being made under the law, and immersed in sufferings, the penalty of it, and made a curse, the law is fulfilled, the curse and wrath of God removed, the sinner can look upon it with pleasure and obey it with delight. Or whether these may be thought to represent the afflictions of God's people, comparable to water for their multitude, and for their overflowing and overwhelming nature, and to bitter ones, being grievous to the flesh, especially when God hides his face and they are thought to be in wrath. But these are sweetened through the presence of Christ, the shedding abroad of his love in the heart, the gracious promises he makes and applies, and especially through his bitter sufferings and death, and the fruits and effects thereof, which support, refresh, and cheer. See Hebrews 12. 2-3. There he made a statute and an ordinance. Not that he gave them at this time any particular law or precept, whether moral or ceremonial, such as the laws of keeping the Sabbath and honoring of parents, which the Targum of Jonathan mentions, and to which Jarki adds that concerning the red heifer. But he gave them a general instruction and order concerning their future behavior, that if they hearken to his commandments, and yielded obedience to them, it would be well with them, if not they must expect to be chastised and afflicted by him, as is observed in the following verse, to which this refers. And there he proved them, the people of Israel, by these waters being first bitter and then sweetened, whereby he gave them a proof and specimen how it would be with them hereafter, that if they behaved ill they must expect the bitter waters of affliction, but, if otherwise, pleasant and good things. Or, there he proved him, Moses, his obedience, and faith, by ordering him to cast in the tree he showed him, but the former sense seems best to agree with what follows.